Hey soul family, welcome back to the channel. This is the White Feather Tarot. Today's topic has been highly requested, a specific career reading in detail for the next year. Another one that's highly um, requested is your love life in 2025. So that's coming up. Uh, and so these readings will be created for the specific people who want to zoom in, zero in on their careers or next on their relationships. So I hope you enjoy your reading today. Grab a cup of coffee and a snack and enjoy um, the details that we're about to get in. We'll be dividing the reading into three parts as we do in the bigger one and the your year in detail, 2025, for example. Um, and we'll be dividing it into three parts, each one uh, the uh, four months separately. Okay, so that's the plan for today's reading. Hope you enjoy it. If you prefer to pick your piles using your zodiac signs, you will find a timestamp for that down in the description box. Otherwise, in today's reading, we'll be pulling out three major arcana. I want to preface this by saying, let's say we pull out a card that you perceive uh, is like an unfavorable card for one reason or the other unless you're not drawn to it that's another thing but sometimes you guys ask me i'm drawn to this card but i don't like it um be open uh, it's about learning to trust our intuition and not let our emotions come in the way and believe me so many times and if you've watched that you've been with me for many years now, you know, you've seen this too. Like we would see an unfavorable card, we'd all go, deep breath. <laughs> Let's see the energy of this reading. And then it turns out to be so positive. So it's not really related. Sometimes you'd find a positive card and then you don't find the reading to be, I mean, it's good and everything. Everything is good at the end of the day, it's guidance, but it's not really uh, what we exactly thought it was. So it will all depend on the context um, of the of the connecting cards, uh, the overall picture that we see. I always say this. Let's wait until we have a, an overall picture on this, like I notice a pattern or something. Uh, but yeah, it's all about the full picture. So this is what I wanted to say. Trust your intuition uh, and don't let fear, uh, our emotions, get in the way of understanding our intuition. Let it lead the way. All right, so let's pull out your cards. You've got the Justice card. Oops, sorry. For pile number one. Ah, let's put it down there so that we have space for the crystals, yeah. Pile number two. You've got the Magician. This is what your card looks like. And for pile number three, you've got the chariot. As always, if you prefer to pick your piles using your crystals, let me add these right now. There we go. So for pile number one, You've got the red jasper. For pile number two, you've got the Amazonite. And for pile number three, You've got the Lodolite. So take a look at which one of these three piles you're the most drawn to. And this or these will be the piles for you here today. In case you feel drawn to more than one pile, maybe even all of the piles, trust your intuition, let it take you to the piles that you're meant to hear. And perhaps you can even listen to them at different times, just knowing that this will also be your pile. Um, and once you're ready, you'll find the timestamps down in the description box. 
click on your times which will take you straight to your readings and please note that in a moment i will be assigning different zodiac signs to each pile and so if this is something that you do not prefer please pause the video and take as much time as you need If you prefer to pick your piles using your signs, then as you know, this part of the introduction was created specifically so that you can do just that. All right, um, I've been enjoying um, drawing out or scooping out the four signs of each piles all at once <laughs> recently. So let's do that. Sometimes I just scoop them and realize I already have four in my hands, which is exactly that situation. So we've got four. So these are the signs for the first pile. Second pile. And the third. Let's see what we've got. So for pile one, the signs are Capricorn, Taurus, Aries, and Libra. The signs for pile number two are Gemini, Scorpio, Leo, and Cancer. And the signs for pile number three are Virgo, Sagittarius, Pisces, and Aquarius. So, my dear soul family, these are the signs and their association to each of the piles in today's reading. Please feel free to pick your pile or piles using your sun, moon, or rising. I highly recommend you check out the three, of course. Alternatively, if you prefer to pick your pile or piles using other placements in your chart, you can always do that. How you pick your piles is 100% up to you and what resonates with you at the moment. These are just different ways to make it more enjoyable for you and to make it easier for you to pick your piles. Once you're ready, you'll find the timestamps down in the description box. Click on your times and I will see you in your readings. Hi, pile number one, welcome to your reading. Today, we're taking a look at what you can expect next in your career. And um, these are the decks that I'll be using for your reading. If you're interested in knowing the names of any of them, you'll find that I always list them down in the description box. Uh, the way we're going to be doing the reading today <clears throat> is exactly the same way uh, we do it when we do the yearly readings. And so I will be dividing your re reading into three equal parts. In the first row, we will be fully exploring what you can expect in the first four months from January to April. Second part of the reading is from May to August. And third part of the reading is from September to December. This way you get to zoom in, zero in on the details of what you can expect in your year, uh, part by part. All right, so that is the plan. I hope you enjoy your reading. Uh, very quickly, let me introduce your pile to you. Your crystal is the beautiful red jasper. Your significator card is the justice card. And if you've picked your pile using your zodiac signs, then in that case, the signs for this pile are Capricorn, Taurus, Aries, and Libra. Welcome to your reading. If these are not your signs, please don't worry about it. It's just another way for others to pick their piles as well. All right, <clears throat> so now that this is out of the way and all of your decks are shuffled, let's begin with the first part of your year from January to April. What can you expect in your career? So you've got Mercury in Aries with restlessness. Okay, can you see your card? Yeah, I think you can. Let's keep it there. You've got, oh, the sacral chakra with enlightenment. Wow, the 
that's a very positive card for sure. It's like finding everything, finding the path, finding the reason, finding why you're doing everything, finding the gold, it's everything here. Okay, and you've got the Daga's rune. Obviously, this is changing everything. We'll get into the detail in the moment, just my quick observations. Okay, let's take a look at your tarot cards. Keep them like this, so we have the space you've got. The world card. Yes, this does change everything. You've got the nine of swords. The hermit. The five of cups. And you've got, wow, the embodiment of swords. This is the king of swords. Wow, what a, what a first part of your year. No wonder you've got the justice card. Okay, so what am I seeing going on here? Whoa! <laughs> um, yeah, exactly just like this deck was falling. I feel like with the world cards, you're like, oh my god, I know exactly what I want. Um, I know exactly how to do what I was doing. And there seems to be an instant change of everything. Uh, so this is like maybe, for example, you've been trying to achieve a specific career goal for a long time. You've been working hard and you've been building it. But then comes a moment where you learn exactly how it's done. Or you find the source of that product that everybody wants. Or you find even the very career that you wanted. Like, let's say you're doing your own thing and uh, a company wants to hire you they're like whoa you are the person um, we're looking for and you find yourself you're you'll find yourself doing all of the things that you love getting access to all the things that you love and you find yourself that hey wait a minute perhaps in a weird twist of events this is more liberating for me uh, this is actually what i want you know there isn't a specific rule to something or the other way around. For example, you're 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 working in a job. It's what you always thought was your career path, and then suddenly, you become enlightened about a sort of job that has all of your box ticks ticked. Like you get to do your own thing in the time that you want. You get to use the skills that you have. You get to be passionate, and it ticks all of your boxes. So there is a moment like that, whatever it is, like whether it's changing fields, changing careers, it could be even in the same job, like um, not much changing. Like maybe you've been in HR forever, you, get, you become friends with a person from the marketing department, you find out what they're doing and you're like, oh my God, this is exactly what I love. I mean, I'm naturally good at it. That's exactly what I'm doing in the HR department anyways. And you start thinking, well, what am I going to do now? Like, I need to be in this department. <laughs> One thing or the other. It could be in the same business. Maybe you have a business and you're like, you've been doing the service in one way all of your life. And then you realize, I don't know, AI, for example, is going to help you out in such a different way. In any case, whatever the scenario is and whatever this major change is going to be, and whatever it is that you're going to be enlightened with. I can tell you two things. First of all, you're going to be so excited about your future and the rest of your year. Second of all, I can tell you that you will be making drastic changes to the way you're doing your everyday job. Um, and you can see it with the Daga's rune. It is the rune of transformation. And so I see you instantly ending things and instantly instigating things. You're restless, you know? The energy flowing through your sacral chakra is making it nearly impossible to, to pause. You feel like you've just connected to some form of energy 
passion that cannot be stopped. And you can see it here with Mercury in Aries with restlessness. You're already on the move. You're making these changes. You're moving towards it. And despite the fact that at some moments you're going to be like, oh my God, what did I do? What did I drop? Am I crazy? <laughs> um, finding yourself in the dark a little bit sometimes sometimes doubting yourself sometimes not being able to see ahead which is going to be by the way uh i, I gotta be honest with you it will be some time dark 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 do you see the scene you can't really see i mean you've got an idea mm, you're really scared especially when you can't see it's all it uh, um, induces anxiety a little bit um you're like, oh my God, am I doing the right thing? Am I crazy? <laughs> but I do have good news also along with this news. You can see the light at the end of the tunnel during that period of, the, of time at the same time. So while there is a time where you will be scared, sometimes you're regretting, regretful of what you've done, uh, looking back and saying, oh, I don't know if I'm doing the right thing, which is obviously triggered by the worries and the anxieties of this of the instant action that you've taken uh, you will also find the light at the end of the tunnel in that time from january to april so it's not all dark during that time you eventually do find the light at the end of the tunnel and you can see the nine and the nine reflection just as you will be so worried but remember i want to tell you something on, as a side note, as before we get back to the nine, remember that the nine of swords is the mind and the mind is not in control of you. It is the other way around. In fact, we always get guidance with the nine of swords, not to let the monsters in our heads drive us. Most of the time it's not true. And at its, uh, um, at its minimum, it's there to show you something for you to respect that message and make a plan. Do something about it. But don't get yourself into that mind state. Always vibrate high. Remember, when you vibrate high, you are reflecting that vibration back into your life. So that's just a side note. Um, and so I wanted to say just as you will um, be worried, just as it will make you work hard, to find your way and eventually during that time you will find the light at the end of the tunnel you'll be out of this let's call it bardo time in between time that transformation that chrysalis that uh, cocoon time uh, is exactly what's going on at in the middle of your january to april somewhere in the middle or maybe from the um, a little bit off from the beginning, like towards the end of the beginning, <laughs> right? Uh, up until, for example, the beginning of the end of your January to April, you can expect some time where you're trying to maneuver uh, out of the dark, trying to find your balance, trying to find your way. And this is going to be a critical time. I'm not going to lie to you, but I just want to finish the prediction before I, I say it's a critical time that you will find your way and this is going to be very empowering we'll talk about this transformation the butterflies here all over your reading from different decks so back to this critical time and then we'll uh, go to this uh, power this is a critical time for you because you realize during this time that you did take a huge risk and this risk will either take you to a heavenly place or it could be a risk of ending something entirely. This is not said to uh, scare you. This is a decision that you will want to take, that you will, help, you, you will feel like you can't help but take. Because on the other side with this enlightenment, you know on the other side there's something amazing that's instigating all of this. So this is not to scare you. This is just to let you know that it is a time where you want to be careful and go through it with great balance. Um, you've got Anubis here, the ancient Egyptian. Anubis, of course, was the god of the hallway uh, uh, of when you go when you go to the other side. 
uh, excuse me, when you go to the other side, after death, uh, they, uh, Anubis holds uh, the scale, right? Is the god of the scale uh, of the scale as well? And as you know, <clears throat> as you know the story, I'm sure a heart, which is um, a reflection of the soul, is weighed against a feather. And if it's it balances, if it's as light as a feather, that means the the heart was uh, light, radiating light, and this person gets to go to heaven. Uh, and if not, it goes off scale, and instantly the goddess Amit devours the heart, and um, yeah, there there is no more. There is no more. The soul is eaten up. So this is the idea of and um, the, the scales, the ancient Egyptian uh, scales in the afterlife. So what I wanted to tell you about this was that, as you can see, you're in a critical time. It is a very critical time. And depending on how balanced you are during this time, um, you will either make it or not, the possibility is there. It's all in your hands. Although, however, I do see if we read the energy, your energy today, uh, like your mindset, um, your personality, your character, it does show with the Queen of Swords that you will come out of this strong. And so uh, the, there are two paths here. You are either going to go to the heavenly place, that exact place you were envisioning at the beginning of your quarter or uh, you if you're not balanced uh, you may risk everything right or, or risk a lot let's say so that's what I see here although as I tell you looking at your character your mindset your strength it does look to me which is the other part that I wanted to get to it does look to me like you are going to not just make it you're going to make it powerfully you're going to have you're going to understand so much about this journey in such a short time you're going to transform you're going to find your wings you're going to be free and you're going to start the experience that prompted you to begin all of this in the first place so you're going to make it <laughs> it's like that short but intense time to find your way. So you're gonna understand all about it. You're gonna be illuminated, understand all about it. You're gonna have good plans and systems in place because now you understand its limitations, what it can and can't do to the most part, for the most part. Um, and you will feel more in command because now you understand what to do. You'll feel like, hey, I got this. That's exactly it. And so you can see here with the world card, it's truly an end of a chapter during that time. And it's the beginning of a new journey. The fool's card, the yeah, the fool card, uh, which is not on the table, but it uh, further makes us understand that you are beginning something. Perhaps the fool card is not on the table because you're not really starting like the fool without much knowledge or not knowing what to um, do. Although the full card, you know, they're skilled, they jump into an experience, but they're relying on their skills or what they know. They feel like they can handle it. And they do have skills. It's like jumping off of a cliff, which is exactly the point, but knowing that if you should fall into the water, you'll know how to drive. Uh, sorry, drive. <laughs> Swim. Uh, but here it's a bit, it's a bit more than, it's much, much more than that. Here, it's more like, yes, it's a risk, but you know where to go. You know what to do. Um, you are skilled. You have what it takes. It's just that it's the first time for you to do that. Mm, questions arise such as what happens if this situation comes? Will it actually work? All of the things that I know here. Uh, what if like some weird new law pops up or something outside the norm happens? What if I'm, what if I didn't exactly apply it right? Um, what happens when this ha happens? So as an overall view, 
you know what to do. We haven't done it before, so you're a little bit afraid. It's like, oh, another example. Maybe the people you're working with don't turn out to be uh, honest, for example. There are other types of risks. They're there. Uh, there are things that are scaring you. You're not sure still if you're going to make it, but you're much more equipped than the fool. Than the fool. It, it, like I was going to tell you with the example, uh, like a, a businessman who's done this sort of business uh, in, their comp in their country, succeeded, has done it in many other countries, succeeded. Now they're opening a new market. It's the same thing. They've done it over and over. They've tried in different countries. They more or less know what to do. They more or less know what to expect with the registration process, with um, generally discussing things and all of that. But at the end of the day, it's a new country. Um, so that's an example. So they're more likely going to make it, but there is still the what if, right? They're not the fool starting a new company because they just know the skill uh, or the service needed of this product. They're, they know much more than that. Um, so that's an example. Enlightenment could be you getting information about how something works and it doesn't have to be like a business, but you know how something works. You have the skills, you have the guidance. Everyone maybe in your entourage told you, hey, this is exactly what we've done. Don't worry about it. I've done it. Steve's done it. Sarah's done it. Jessica's done it. Everybody's done it. Come on, go ahead and do it. And while you under you're very well equipped and informed with how to do it, it's your first time. Uh, and you are worried and something arises. Hey, what did Jessica to do about this situation? Uh, Jessica didn't go through this situation. Oh my God, does it mean I'm not going to go through it? Calm, calm down. You're going to do it. Just read more about the specific part. That's what I mean here with this enlightenment card and the fool not being on the table in this part. It shows me that you're more or less good to go. But yes, you are still going to go through a period where you genuinely don't know how it's going to go and nobody knows. This is like uh, you creating and making your own f choices through fr free will. Depending on uh, your awareness, the steps you're going to take through it, they're still a part, you know? They're, you still hold this decision in your hands. I would advise you not to lean into stress a lot. Try to remain as balanced, as calm as you can be. It's the winning way out of uh, this situation. Okay, so my dear pal number one, exciting new beginning, <laughs> I must say. Let's now explore the second part of your year from May to August. All right, <clears throat> let's start out with the rune. And then your chakra cards. Get a sense of the energy. And then through an astrological card. Right, let's check out what we have for your second part of the year. You've got the Algiz rune. You're feeling powerful now. <laughs> so it ends powerfully, obviously, second part of the year. You're feeling in control, in command. You feel like you've got the power. You're doing great. This is great, by the way. The time uh, frame from going to uncertainty to something powerful is actually um, very good. Um, and I believe it's because of this enlightenment card. You've got you've you've got good information backing you up when you first begin. So you've got the heart chakra with wisdom. That's that's exactly what we've learned here. So that continues through into your second part of your year. You can see here with the sage stick, there's cleansing, you're feeling good. There's a lot of green and heart chakra here. You're you're starting to love it. Can you imagine right away, second part of your year from May to August, you're now enjoying the benefits that uh, you're getting from that initiation, that thing that you started in the first part of your year. 
And you've got the moon in Gemini with adaptability. I do see you, yes, working hard. Uh, there are four arms here. Maybe these are people helping you, by the way. It doesn't have to be you, but I see you uh, handling, let's say, many different directions. You feel like you got the hang out of this. You're able to ground yourself and be stable. Uh, and um, you feel like you're on top of things. Exactly. You feel like you're on top of things. Okay, let's now pull out your tarot cards. We'll take it from the top afterwards. So, ooh, you've got the two of cups. Things are working in harmony and you're happy. That's really nice. Okay, and you, this could also mean that you've got a good team working closely with you in harmony. You've got the seven of swords. And wow, you've got the Ten of Cups. That's really cool. I'll tell you why in just a moment. All right. Wow, got another king here. You're really on top of stuff, aren't you? <laughs> now the wealth is showing up. King of Pentacles. Really, that's why you're very happy. You're very happy about everything in general in the second part of your year. And you've got, ooh, ending with the Two of Swords. Looks like you're going to be maybe choosing between two directions. Again, this is open to you. Right. So what are we seeing in the second part of your year? Not going to repeat. It's very clear. You're on top of your stuff. Things are working well. Your Things are working harmoniously. We, we talked about all of that. You're really happy. Now, is this related to this or not? Just want to pull out a yes or no question. Is the Seven of Swords relating to the Two of Swords or leading to it? Again, is it explaining the Two of Swords or is it leading to it? I think it's leading to it. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, it's leading to that choice. The lover's card is also a card of choice. You can see it's leading. Everything, actually. Everything is leading to that grand choice. It's a big one, obviously. All right. So let me tell you what I'm seeing beyond what we discussed. I see that in the second part of your year... You want to hunt something. You're like, hey, this looks lucrative. This looks like a really lucrative opportunity. <laughs> so you're like, I'm going to hunt this. Because with the Seven of Swords, you're thinking, if I am able to land this opportunity, hunt down, chase, catch this opportunity, uh, I would have created a shortcut for myself in terms of w w the important things that I want to achieve that will make me happy, as well as the resources and the money that I can make with this hit. So imagine something along the lines of, um, instead of climbing the ladder in your current job, for example, Let's say you get into this new department. Instead of climbing the ladder, right? You're like, give me your biggest, most complicated project that you've been trying to handle and fix all year. Uh, or throughout the years. Uh, that's the one. That's our like, that's not working. Well, that's not getting us money. In fact, we think we're gonna, we might even close this line. And you're like, I'm so good at this that what if I make a deal with you? What if I take on this project on the side? I mean, I'll be doing my job and everything, but since this is not working out anyway, you just give me the space to renegoti renegotiate, uh, find out what the pin, like the troublesome points are, go and mm, understand the market, maybe make some nice deals, do all of this, these things. And if I, to work like, I'm able to jumpstart it and, and start 
making it uh, generate the revenue that you want, by the end of the quarter, you um, you make me the marketing manager of this part of this new line of this new yeah line. Oh, that 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 project's not working. Well, you've got nothing to lose, right? Give me three months. I either make some progress or at least the very least um, I'll be able to give you your money back if you want to close things up yeah you'll have money back okay uh you have a deal so that and then obviously you can see here <laughs> that you do in fact achieve this shortcut and you get the th ten of cups. You're elated. You're jumping up and down. You're so you can't believe that you've achieved this. And this directly results in you um, making a lot of money. Uh, it doesn't have to be like that. It could be your own business. Maybe you um, sell something at a certain price, and you go, "Wait a minute. Um, I see that people love that type of benefit." And if I can provide this important benefit that's not there in the market to this degree, to this, what seems now as this impossible degree, I can charge it in the same way all of these like higher priced services or products are at. Fair and square for everyone. Uh, let me, instead of putting all of my efforts diverse into these little things, how about I do what actually matters, what people are looking for, what will change their lives. So you chase down that opportunity. You start working on this super sophisticated product or service that's genuinely going to help everyone out. Everyone will, will be happy and will even, like if they can, hug you <laughs> as a thank you for that awesome service or product that's just really changing their lives. Um, or... You're, hunt, you're hunting down a bigger uh, market, hunting down a bigger uh, client, like something like that, that sh definitely changes the way you do your business. So I try to like bring all of the examples in the different areas of life to show you what I mean here. Mm, so here in the second part of your year, as everyone, everything's working, you feel like you've got a good grasp on your work and maybe even your team or at least the different areas of your work, you know what to expect. You're happy, you're, you're vibrating happiness here. Uh, you start now thinking beyond that. You're like, but what if I can hunt this down? If I hunt this down successfully, the things I can do, <laughs> the, the goals I can achieve, the higher up I can grow in my career or in my business, that sort of idea hits you. You notice something and you are going to, in fact, achieve it. You're going to be very happy. You're going to be very elated and you are going to begin making a lot of money off of this smart move. Now it doesn't end there. After all of this done and you've grown this way in the second part of your year, you've discovered what your potential is, what you can do, and the type of happiness it's bringing you, the new life, obviously, that you're living and getting into the heaven, right? You realize that now you're starting to think about an important decision to make. And this is like a, a, a wink almost. Um, it is happening in the second part of the year, but it's kind of like leading us to your third part of the year, I think. Um, but again, just like this card, this is your energy in, in 2025 when it comes to your career. You're always going back, circling back and going, hmm, what if? You're what ifing <laughs> throughout the year. And you're like, what if? Now that I'm able to do that and achieve that, what if I can go down that path or open that new door for myself? Uh, quick examples, very quick examples. Let's say you're in the company, you make this work for yourself 
and your company is like wowed, amazed. You start finding out from the employees what's wrong. You start making better deals. You understand the market, creating better com- campaigns. You you you're you're like you're amazing. Uh, and to think you came from H H R. Wow. <laughs> so we're moving. So we're going along the story. You think to yourself, well, since I was actually able to do that, why don't I become a consultant for companies? Now I have a good example to show and this, the big change I've made, I've got, I can prove it with the numbers. Why don't I open that door for myself? Um, that door doesn't mean you're leaving your old thing behind or it could mean that you're entirely leaving it behind. But uh, one thing I can say is that at the end, you are making a very important, I would say, choice that will change your destiny or your path significantly, just like you've done in the beginning of your year. The amount, uh, uh, now I understand the butterflies. The amount of changes you'll be making this year is crazy. So yeah, that leads to a choice. If you've got your own business, then I would say, depending on what this hunting down a bigger client or something, towards the end, you're like, hmm, what if I start making the company bigger? and having shareholders this is this way we have a bigger budget to make millions for example that's one direction or what if i can use this money to invest in something bigger uh i don't know exactly what you're going to be thinking at that time but i do know that you will be making a decision that will is almost like a split in your path where your old you had you stayed the way you are would have been doing something with these specific tasks and these this type of income whereas you number b pile number two b is now making and we're saying b maybe you're gonna be making billions that'll be cool (laughs) you'll be making a far different amount and your tasks are different. Maybe you're diversifying your efforts or uh, f- uh, investments or something, but you'll be making a very uh, important cho- choice that is changing your destiny is exactly what I am seeing here in the second part of your year. Wow, <laughs> what a reading drastic drastic changes for sure okay this takes us to your third part of the year from september to december and let's see what's going on there very excited to find out for you okay let's go again oh i actually feel this one right there let's keep that here And pull out a chakra card. Looks like this one's standing out, so I'm going to take it as well. Got a chakra card. We can actually push this a little bit up since we're getting more cards. It is the row that has more space anyway, so I guess it's meant to be. Let's pull out a rune. And check them out before we pull out your tarot cards. So you've got the moon in Aquarius with independence. Wow, looks like right off the bat, some of you are going to be independent from something. So independent, you know, is like if you're working in a company, you're like, I'm doing my own thing. Or maybe here... If you've got like your business, maybe you're selling it at a huge price. You're like, hey, the company's working. It's bringing, generating this amount of money. You take it. I'm free. (laughs) Something like that. Um, So there is independence here. 
maybe this is financial independence. Maybe you're becoming financially independent in the third part of the year. But I defin we definitely see here independence for you. Okay, you've got, again, the solar plexus with a miracle. My God, I think the choice you're going to be making is out of this world. <laughs> you yourself, as you make that choice, you yourself won't believe the results it's going to give you. Uh, so we've got miracle here with the solar plexus and another type of energy that we see in your year in general is you doing things that you just know is going to work and then be absolutely surprised when it does work and worried when it's not <laughs> although you're always starting off with knowing knowing that it's going to work so nice expect a miracle for sure in the third part of the year i can confidently tell you where you're going to be in the beginning of your year is very different than what you're going to be in, in your career of course uh, towards the end of the year my god the, the changes are drastic in this pile so you've got the third eye chakra with third eye chakra oh yes yes the crown chakra is in gray third eye chakra with despondence Uh, oh, it's, you know, like not really doing much. You're enjoying life. <laughs> and that is because you have a vision that worked out for you or is working out for you. Um, yeah, so I don't see, like I see you, yes, working hard here. I see you working hard here. But in the third part of the year, a miracle happens. Yes, it's because of your vision. Absolutely. But... Um, but it's still a miracle after all. I paused because I was looking at this lady. It's like, why does this person get to have all of that? That's not fair. <laughs> that energy is always there. I don't know why it's showing up in your cards, but it's there. Uh, you can see here, perhaps it is showing you a, a perspective, like how much you've grown out of your own environment and as if that wasn't enough you're pregnant with the world here the world's your oyster there's so much more to come but now it's more of things working for you rather than you working for it and you've got the gebel rune wow <laughs> this is one of the one of the most favorable runes it is a rune of the gift it's that gift that a king would give to someone uh, like here, take this land. Here, take this huge amount of money. So this is a huge, uh, yeah, just a miracle. Uh, you will feel like the universe just gave you a huge gift in life. A huge amount of money that maybe you don't know what to do with. <laughs> you know, something like that. Or a huge gift of like your career growing in such an expansive way that you don't even understand it. So, yeah, that's what's going on in the third part of your year. It looks like you made it to heaven, <laughs> my dear pile number one. Let's pull out the rest of your tarot cards to understand more about this energy. So, you've got the four of wands. Obviously, there, there's leveling up. You're growing. You're celebrating life, even. I see you having more fun now. Um, I see you enjoying it, celebrating it, and constantly with the Four of Wands, constantly leveling up. And so this was kind of giving us a, a foresight onto what to expect at the end of the year. They go hand in hand, these two cards. You've seen a vision, it happens, and even bigger at the end of the year. You've got... The magician, yes, of course, absolutely. The hands, um, you're, you feel like you've done this, you've, you've built this, you're skilled, you're good. And now you understand all of the elements pertaining to this whole situation. You feel like, I can do anything now that I understand it to this degree. I can do anything is how you feel towards the end of the year. Whoa, looks like... A lot of people uh, are going to be talking about you. You've got the four 
sorry, the six of wands, a lot of wands energy, energy of excitement here. You gain attention. Uh, whatever it is that you've done here, you're getting a lot of recognition, a lot of attention. Who knows to what scale we're looking at here? Perhaps it's the news reporting, uh, talking about what you've done. Uh, or maybe you become popular. Everyone's like, wow, I, I, like a known name of some sort. Uh, and yeah, there's like a huge success, huge popularity. Uh, admired for what you've done, what you can do. Now the fool appears. <laughs> you don't stop, do you, my dear pile number one? And why should you? This is the essence of life. Keep going, my dear pile number one. You've got the full card and the ace of wands. And uh, towards the end of the year, <laughs> you start now going into a whole new experience. I think it's once you've realized that you've got a full grasp over what you can do with your potential and knowledge, then, that then... You're going like, you know what? I want to step into a whole new experience now. I want to do something that not only do I love, but something that I'm absolutely passionate about. I feel that now I'm ready to take a risk, a crazy risk, knowing the type of skills that I have, but not just the skills, knowing... You have an understanding of the different elements. Like, let's say, for example, you understand the law. You understand how, in general, business is done. You understand how to do your own thing, for example. I'm just trying to guess the different things. So, it's not just skills, but you understand the different elements of the business world or your field. And you're going saying, what if now I start something, it's a new field that I'm excited about, perhaps this time I don't have to do the whole thing, maybe I can bring experts that can do what I don't understand, for example, looking at the full card, and start speaking to these experts and understanding what to expect. So I don't know what you're doing here, this is like huge energy, <laughs> but... You're very excited towards the end of your year. You've managed to achieve such big dreams in one year. And you're already towards the end of the year very excited about a new possibility, a new creative possibility that is really pressing on the buttons of your passion. It seems to me like you are that type of person. Keep going. You're going to love this year, my dear pile uh, number one. The one ad big advice I can give you is the one in the very beginning. Don't scare yourself out of the, all of this great potential and always balance yourself back, like saying, yes, uh, things can happen. What is this feedback telling me? Uh, but I'm going to center myself and I'm going to have faith that it's going to be great. I'm going to believe in what I'm doing and handle things bit by bit. What is, it, what is it showing me? What can I do about it? Let me solve this part. So take it easy on yourself. Uh, always remind yourself, no, I'm not going to allow my mind to sway that far into that direction. I'll scratch the surface, understand what the worries are. Thank you so much. Got it. And take the necessary action to inform yourself. Informing yourself makes a huge difference. It is the difference between one walking through the same path who knows yeah that sort of cycle happens yeah 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 don't worry about it uh, that that that's the sort of thing that happens there we just need to wait it out or we need to like do this thing or do that thing and the other person was like oh, what's going on I, I, I what is what does it mean does it mean the end of everything so it's the same path but the more informed you are about it and understand its expectations even if it was step by step it's like, hey, what's happening here? Research, ask. And the more you'll go through it gracefully. And my dear pile number one, this is exactly what I see in your career in the next year. I truly hope you've enjoyed it. 
If you have, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a reading that I upload. And my dear pile number one, it was a real, real pleasure doing your reading. And I'll catch you in the next one. Oh, I just noticed. Look, there's an X that, uh, and there's an X here. Only difference here that uh, these two lines need to be removed, showing us that it's like a potential. It's an idea and you actually bring it to life. A vision that comes to life, like the biggest vision, uh, best case scenario comes to life. And I'll catch you in the next reading. Bye. Hi, pile number two. Welcome to your reading. Today, we're taking a look at your career in detail for the next year. To do this reading, I will be dividing your reading into three parts as we do with the bigger uh, reading of the full year. This way, we get to explore in detail the first part of your year, which will be from January through April to April. Second part of your year will be from May to August. And of course, the third part of your year will be from September to December. Can't wait to get into your reading. That's the plan. But very quickly, let me introduce your pile to you. Your crystal is the beautiful Amazonite. Your significator card is the magician. And of course, if you've picked your pile using your zodiac signs, then in that case, the signs for this pile are Gemini, Scorpio, Leo and Cancer. Welcome to your reading, guys. If these are not your signs, please don't worry about it. It's just another way for others to pick their pals as well. Okay, so all of your cards are fully shuffled and <clears throat> ready for your reading. Let's pull out your, <clears throat> excuse me, oracle cards first. Uh, in the first row, representing, of course, January to April. Wow, really, really nice. Right off the bat, you've got Mercury in Gemini with excitement. Yes, <clears throat> and look, it looks like it's from the heavens. It's the same thing about uh, Kitsune, who... I'll, I'll give you an introduction about Kitsune, the Japanese fox. It's, it's a very magical being. But remember, these two are very much connected. Let's keep your first card here. You've got the sacral chakra with a prayer. Ah, connecting the heaven and the earth. <laughs> Wish is coming true. Obviously, you've been through a difficult time when it comes to your career lately or maybe for a long time because you can see the lemons here. It was bitter somehow. It is turning into a lemonade. Don't be sad at all. Um, you felt that your dream perhaps, or your prayer was shattered, it wasn't going to happen, but it's definitely happening for you. So if you currently feel sad, please take this weight off of your chest. Things are absolutely changing and the difficulties that you've gone through are going to turn into something amazing. It was for your own good. You can see lemons turning into lemonade. So nice. Okay, let's, I, I really feel this one because it was sticking out a second ago. So I'm going to pull this rune out. And you've got the Othala rune. Mm -hmm. The Othala rune in this context could be your organization. The organization you work in. Or going maybe to another one. Let's see. And uh, we'll pull out your tarot cards. For the first part of your year. Oh my god. All the waiting is leading to something great. With the Empress here. <laughs> Lovely. So you've got the Empress. You've got the Four of Swords. Like a frozen time. That, le that leads to things now moving upwards. Because that's the background of the Four of Wands. You've got the Chariot. The Two of Swords. You've got the two of cups, two, two, perhaps something significant happening in February. Yeah, I think it's best that we have them here so you can see them. All right. And finally, you've got for the first part of your year, 
the ooh the emperor you get there <laughs> that is the fool sitting in the emperor's throne lovely right so let's explore what this is saying <clears throat> it's funny i was just taking a sip of my tea when i noticed the drinking here i was drinking to soothe my throat as i'm ready to release a little cold that i've had recently i think this is kind of uh, symbolizing the same thing you're healing from something and you're now moving towards your wish because that is the figure from the star card yes you can see that you've been greatly hurt previously but now things are shifting because that's the background of the two of wands and you can you've you've understood and learned so much from the previous pain points when it comes to your career Again, we can see here a shift from the Four of Swords to the Four of Wands, some stagnation, which we can see uh, also in the um, Hanged Man, who's now in the Emperor's uh, throne. So it's giving us the same thing, an awakening. Doo -doo 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 -doo. A prayer is coming true when it comes to your work. You will, specifically with the Othala rune, which is a rune of family or in your case in a context of a career reading i would say organization maybe you have your own business or maybe you work in a company so i see things are flourishing there you've waited you've kept waiting uh, seeing no no results um i feel like you could have gotten something similar to a cold like um you felt sad maybe you felt like you didn't have the energy to go through since it was maybe so stagnant or you know the cold is like something affecting us maybe something was happening that was affecting your work uh, it made you feel stagnant it made you made you feel like your movement was slow you didn't have the energy maybe to do what you wanted and i can see here that you're now healing in the first part of the year you have learned a lot, however, from whatever you you have gone through. And I see you now starting to see your career or your next steps in the first part of your year very much differently than before. You're still with the Two of Cups doing what you're doing. You're making it work. But you now understand that you are going to drop some things that are not doing you good. And you are going to hold on to the things that you know are good for you. But back to the prayer. As you can see, you're, something is going to happen that will manifest the prayer that you've always been asking for. I wish this would work. I wish this would work. And perhaps it wasn't, you felt it wasn't heard for a long time, but your Significator card here, as well as your first card that showed up really show you a strong message of you are absolutely heard because the kitsune first of all let me give you a quick introduction before i talk about that the kitsune uh, or kitsune i'm not sure exactly how uh, it's pronounced is a magical fox uh, japanese m magical fox who has several tails mostly nine tails but the more tails they have the more they show power and wisdom and so you can clearly see that's cool that we open this up because it matches what we're seeing here, that you've gained wisdom, you've gained understanding, experience um, in uh, doing whatever you've gone through and going through whatever you've gone through. The mask has fell. You can see things clearly, which is which used to be the thing here. You couldn't see now with the two of wands, very opposite energy. Now you can see well. Uh, and oh, I wanted to tell you here about the Kitsune or Kitsune that uh, some of them are considered like uh, messengers they bring uh, the messages from the heavens to the earth especially to the pious people it is said and this is what i feel like uh, here 
uh, this is saying your prayers have been heard you've been good at whatever it is you're doing perhaps you felt like it wasn't fair maybe there's no cards here that's showing that it's not fair um but just my just my sense i could be wrong but anyways uh, you felt you didn't like that energy because it was stagnant for so long it hurt uh, so you've learned a lot from it that that's a good thing that came but also what i wanted to say was with a, a pious idea is that you've been really doing what is necessary you've been going uh continuing at it doing what is needed um, and here this is saying your prayers are heard they've never been ignored uh, perhaps they need to be done in the right time in fact speaking of the kitsune did you know that they are the harbingers to um good luck like there it's signaling an upcoming successful and uh prosperous harvest to come and so you can see if the, your wish uh, obviously this is a career reading your wish somehow must be related to having success right uh, which is what we're seeing here having success uh, obviously as well uh, having prosperous harvest um, that's definitely coming up your prayer is heard loud and clear and yes there was a, pa a pause but a pause leading and dropping you right into the mouth of abundance <laughs> so now in the first part of the year you're having a drink uh, as in like you're calming down healing a little bit um uh, yeah you're you're starting to relax as you start things as you watch things moving it's not like an aggressive part of your year i'm seeing uh i'm seeing that if this is your business you're like oh okay uh the bumpy ride is over i can now like <sighs> breathe relax reflect uh, think of what wasn't working for me what do i need to drop what was working for me things are now starting to move you're and as time progresses in the first part of your year you start realizing that you are getting closer and closer towards abundance um and you find yourself uh, in a stable situation it's almost with the full card like a new page a new beginning to whatever it is you you're going through a new beginning that is much more stable uh, a beginning where you know what to do uh, and there's something new here because you've got the othala and the fool maybe you're gonna be for some of you starting your own thing um maybe you will have a new position yeah new position this is like new position yes you have a new position maybe you're gonna open or register a new company maybe you're gonna start something new in your company there's something to this effect uh, obviously happening in the first part of your year from january to april so prayer is coming true you're get you're coming closer to abundance you've learned a lot from the past you're soaking it up uh, you're ready to begin anew or something anew. Um, perhaps some of you are going to be offered this position. It's like uh, ha more harmony is going to happen and you're going to be offered a new position that you will really love. Working harmonious with a team <clears throat> or a manager uh, or someone, a co-worker, harmoniously together. You know, you're definitely getting a new position you've waited for this for a long time because you see in the othala rune you can see a crab who has inherited the home its home from the one before it right so you can see here that a lot of you are going to be getting a new position so there's a movement upward movement you're getting a new position perhaps that person is getting a higher up and so on so that movement is there if you have your own business this definitely means a, le a level up maybe a new office you're moving to a new office for some of you maybe the upgrade is you're working at home the empress uh, or or working in a beautiful place that you love working in there's something about the office here the home working from home 
or working in a beautiful office or upgrading even your office or moving offices. There, there's something about that also happening in your reading. Yeah, so overall, I see that there's a prayer coming true that is allowing you to move this office or to move into this new position. I see things are calm, they're moving, they're steady. Uh, but in the first part of your year, I don't see a lot of like uh, action per se. I see, I, I actually see you enjoying life. You know, you know where you're going now. You Things are harmonious at work. Things are calmer. You're leveling up, but there's peace. Yeah, you're you're not doing a lot, but there is abundance. So that's that's so lovely to see for you here, uh, my dear pile number two. I, I love this energy for you. So overall, a new beginning and your prayers being heard. If your prayer is not just like if it's a position, it makes sense. If it's your business, maybe your business is leveling up, right? Your business is leveling up. It's now making more money and you don't have to work as hard as you used to. Got it. <laughs> so that's what's going on in both scenarios in case you have your your own thing or in case uh, you are working in a specific organization. Okay, so that is the first part of your year. I wish you the best of luck with that. Let's now start uh, taking a look at and exploring the second part of your year and see what's there from May up to August. What can you expect, my dear pile number two? I told you this is a year of your abundance. This is signaling, this is a sign that your year is going to be prosperous and abundant. Right, so that's the second part of your year. That's the first card. Let's pull out a card here. And a rune. And see what we have. Mm, nice. You've got the moon in Pisces with inspiration. I love this for you, uh, my dear pile number two. You've got the crown chakra with release. Uh, okay. And you've got the rune Algiz, lovely. Pile number one had this exact rune in the second part of the year. So I guess if you are drawn to pile number one, somehow you'll be able to understand how the only you will understand <laughs> how they work together. Okay. So yeah, if you're drawn to it, I recommend it for you. Um, because like I said, sometimes... I can, un I can understand how piles are connected. Sometimes I see you guys in the comment section going, oh my God, I was pile one and three and it made all the sense in the world. I'm like, wow, how, 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 did, how can they connect? <laughs> but uh, only you understand what your message is. Right, so let's take a look at your tarot cards. You've got the Queen of Pentacles. You've got, whoa, the king of pentacles. Are you partnering with someone as powerful as you? That's the Algiz rune, power, wow. Who knows? Let's explore. You've got the star card. Lovely. You keep getting water in this uh, particular place. You've got the wheel of fortune. the Seven of Swords, and finally, you've got the, wow, the Judgment card. Oh, wow, there's an announcement and some news. Again, that theme of the heavenly news uh, keeps, keeps continuing to appear in your reading. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so magic it is this year for you, isn't it? What is going on here? There's a huge transformation. There's a point of huge transformation going on in the second part of your year. 
Um, yes, for sure. What is that transformation? I see you imagining bigger things, especially things that you believe only you can do with Arthur's sword here. And perhaps this is you now announcing something new to everyone. It's like, hey, I'm gonna be pulling the, I'm gonna be plunging into this, or I'm gonna be pulling the trigger, is it called, onto that. I'm going to be doing that. And this is perhaps why you have release. This is the crown chakra. So you can see some thoughts going on, a huge reflection going on in the second part of your year. You're like, you know what? Um, maybe I should let some aspect go of my work or maybe all of it, who knows, and starting a new one. Or maybe I don't have to do this anymore and I'm going to do this because I know that I can do it. It's, it may look far off, out of reach for everyone, but I know I can do it. And I'm going to be announcing to everyone that I am going to be doing it. I see a lot of people feeling very happy for you here. Hmm. So in the second part of the year, you feel very inspired to do something. Something starts speaking to your heart and it makes you dance with happiness. You're like... My passion, my creative energy just starts. I feel it in every part of my body as I think of this. In contrast, I feel like something in my life is dying off. I should just let it go. So examples of that, if we were if to to look at everything we're looking at now, examples are, let's say you do finally get that great job that you have, you, a lot of money starts coming in. And you're like, I always wanted that. But when I've got it, I don't know, I don't think that's exactly what I've thought it was. Um, so that's an example. And perhaps you're like, you know what, I've got the capabilities, I've got the money, I've got this, I've got that. Uh, I can do something about it. It doesn't have to be as drastic or a dramatic of a change, but it could be something like, you know what? I don't have to do these things. They take up so much of my time. They are um, things I don't like. Maybe these are beliefs that you want to release, like um, uh, things that are set in stone, in your company, in your organization, you're like, why are we doing this like that? And that's not right. And we need to change this. We need to change that. So this could be your invitation to change things that have been set in stone in this position for a long time. And you feel like you have that power and you definitely have powerful support. I see people cheering for you. People like the fact that you're going to be making these changes and you can, you're showing your vision. Everyone's like, yes, finally, somebody gets it. <laughs> and you feel like you can do it so easily. And you feel so guided on how to do it. You're a star. Look at that. Queen of Pentacles holding the star. You feel like a star and you are seen as a star in the second part of the year. You're seen as that um you are the agent of change um, and everyone's so happy. So you're making everyone rise. So that's one way to look at this. And when it, if it, this is your business, I must say there is a lot of major changes happening here. And just as the magician uh, is all about as within, so without, uh, you too, pile number two here. Uh, even when it comes to your business, not just working in a company, but for even your own business. I feel like in the second part of your year, now that you're calm, things are starting to work, you're getting rewards and prosperity, you feel like now you're calm to see the things that you want to change. You're like thinking big now. You're thinking, uh, oh, I would love to have this. Oh, I would love to have that. Also, the Seven of Swords could be a shortcut. You want to escape some things that you don't like about your business. Maybe escape a certain 
market, escape a certain way of doing your product or service, and you feel very inspired with the new dreams that you're guided to move towards, you're thinking, although my dream feels big, uh, I, am, I'm, I, I can do it. And it's going to be a great shortcut with the Seven of Swords. It's going to be a great shortcut for me to be able to do what I want. This is going to be a powerful move that you're going to be making, my dear pile number two, because I see you now rearranging your files. You're taking out the things that aren't working anymore. You're, you have a lot of inspiration and passion towards your dreams. You're making changes uh, and something about you announcing it. And maybe you're announcing to your customers, for example, and, and your customers are like, yay, we love that. Thank you. <laughs> or maybe you're making like an ad asking to hire the right person to be on board. Although the king of pentacles doesn't really feel like a hire, to be honest, maybe this is an investor that is that's heard what you're loud and clear what you want to do and wants to help invest in this idea or maybe you're partnering with someone else that is very uh, I don't want to say what's not important that's equally capable of making this happen so this is like a power couple two power powerful partners coming together uh, maybe this is an investor maybe this is a partner that you're meeting but there's something about you announcing a major change and you feel so good about this. You feel, you feel guided. You just know it's going to work. Something in your heart and soul is telling you that this is going to work and you're making the necessary arrangements now as within, so without. You're making so many internal changes uh, in your uh, company, if this is your company or in your organization in the second part of the year from... Uh, May to August, you're going to be uh, creating a solid foundation here. Queen of Pentacles, King of Pentacles, the Algees. Also, you are going to be investing, uh, but you feel like this investment that you're taking out is going to be bringing you back folds and folds. Uh, the investment could be in money, uh, it could be in time, it could be in a risk maybe that you're taking, something of that sort. And you feel like you you feel so confident about it, uh, yeah. And you should be because with the wheel of fortune, this will transform things. You will start seeing these transformations. This card popped up here, and not in the next part. And so you will start seeing these transformations right away in the second part of your year. I see you releasing, letting go of the old and the energy is changing, fortune, more fortune is happening. This is a great decision that happened there. Um, maybe you're working, it doesn't have to be like partnering, it could be a collaboration. You are collaborating with an equally powerful uh, organization or a person, manager, and things are definitely starting to change in that part of your year. What you're envisioning uh, is starting to work. And I think the judgment card also has another meaning here. Uh, it shows that awakening. You are going to hear and realize and see these changes again happening, that level up. You're going to watch that level up uh, happening in the second part of your year. So nice. And this is the magician card. As within, so without. You're making the necessary changes within, inside your organization, and seeing these changes on the outside. So yes, powerful move right there for sure. Good job, my dear pile number two. Okay, so that is the energy that I am seeing in the second part of your year. Let's pull out your Oracle cards once more and see what happens after all of this. <laughs> in the third part of your year knowing that you know you're starting off your year good it's it's interesting it's the first time i see someone starting off their year everything is now calm the abundance is happening that's that's like that's the beginning <laughs> so that's really nice uh, and yeah let's check out your third 
part of your year. Ah, two cards, okay. We have space, we can definitely put them here. So you've got the Kanaz rune, interesting. You found the light. Can you see your card? I think I should push it up a little bit. You've got the throat chakra with expansion. I told you there's something here about you expanding things and it does happen <laughs> in the third part of the year. Wow, your rear ear is moving uh, fast. This is really cool. All right, yeah, actually, what am I thinking about? We already said that here, so sorry about that. Okay. You've got the, right, exactly, moon in Taurus with resistance. What was resistant is now uh, ever flowing, easy flowing, easy going. Right, lovely. So on the precipice, things start to change, right? But on the precipice of the end of the next year, this great announcement happens and you can see everybody's still talking. Do you see? Everybody's still talking. <laughs> So perhaps this is like great marketing, uh, people knowing about you, your co-workers or your company knowing about you. So there is expansion here. Uh, and as you take away the old, it seems like in the third part of the year, things are now flowing. So that could be like the beginning. You see things moving. That's one thing. But things start to flow easily. That's a totally different thing. You've got the you've got Saturn and Gemini with concentration. Lovely. We can totally push this up. So we have space. Mm, yeah. For your third row. You've got the two of pentacles. The five of pentacles, yes, now you're, now things are moving and you're rebuilding, fixing. Lovely. <laughs> okay, lovely. You've, it seems like this year, because now that you're out of something and things are, money is coming in, I feel like you have the mindset and the space to start fixing what was broken and making it work for you. You've got the Knight of Swords. Some of you might even be knighted, as in given, a, maybe you're gonna get an accolade or like a bigger position or something. Like you're definitely gonna be commemorated for the awesome work that you've done here. Look, you're going, the magician. You're like, I've done this. <laughs> the magician mission complete. You've got the Ten of Swords, the end of the pain. Finally ending the pain point. That's the meaning of the Ten of Swords. And you've got the Knight of Pentacles. You're getting two offers at the end of the year because of the end of this terrible pain. So let's now put the pieces together. In the third part of the year, you now understand and learn more. As always, this is your energy. You, you learn, you love learning, understanding. You get to understand on a deeper level. You, you, see, you come off as a wise person who immerses themselves into knowledge, likes to learn from feedback. So in the third part of the year, you're now so focused. You want to learn. You want to understand how to apply your great strategy, your great vision. Uh, and as you take a closer look at what's going wrong, what's, what's, what's tying you, what's causing this resistance, what's the pain point, uh, you are able to take better action, uh, make better plans, uh, think creatively and I see you communicating with so many people let's you do this I do that let's do this let's do that 
uh, you're sharing your vision, the light here. You've discovered some important things here. And you're like, hey, look what I've seen. Uh, we need This is accordingly, we need to do this, we need to do that. So that's the type of energy you're in in the third part of the year. Um, and everyone's with you, it seems, because you've got a great vision that so many people believe in. So you're announcing it. And things are expanding because of that in the third part of the year. And as things are expanding, the things that used to be so resistant, it wasn't moving, start to move uh, easily. It starts to flow. They're no longer pain points. They are released. And so, uh, as you can see, all the energy that's stuck, you're loosening it up with the Two of Pentacles. And there's so much concentration and team effort to build. Do you see? Build what was broken. Because the Five of Pentacles is a card of lack. So that broken system, that broken situation was causing a lot of lack. And you're trying to find out what are the things that are tying this so much that were causing the lack. That's the focus, the concentration here in the third part of the year. And as you focus and as you fix and communicate and build, that resistance starts becoming more flowing. Uh, things start to loosen up and work. And you will. You're, you're going to figure this out. Your great vision here, that investment you put in, that announcement of your great vision, the whole, the release, all of the things that you will do starting the second part of the year and totally focus on continue doing in the third part of the year. And along all of this, you're already every, every, every step, you're seeing changes, you're seeing uh, great, you're hearing great news. But by the third part of the year, there's an expansion, there's growth because of it. You start seeing real things being fixed you start seeing real things starting to move as opposed to it not moving before. It's as almost, this is the as within, so without, but uh, you're still doing that going back. Okay, so taking the feedback and going, ah, it's still resistant here. It's still tight here. It's still not working there. Let's go back and see how we can fix that and communicate it. And, and so you continue to focus. You see that star, that investment, you're still uh, not waiting, like it's in it's in the spider web. You're like, I'm not waiting uh, for it to reap the results. At least that's what you think in your heart. It's like, I'm not waiting for the results now. I just want to do the right thing. But I have great news, though, for you. You're also catching that star. Uh, because here, we're seeing that you will, in fact, be commemorated on your great efforts of changing things with the magician from a great pinpoint to a new beginning that actually works, a new beginning that can be relied on. So you're going to be celebrated, you're going to celebrate your work and you're going to start getting, reaping back the results of that investment that you once put in. I don't promise you that in the end of that, you're abundant throughout, don't get me wrong, you're abundant throughout. But you can see here towards the end of the year, you have broken out of the bottleneck. You started getting consistent money that you can rely on or your company or, or your organization. Starting to get the results or the wealth or the money, profits that is expected. And although towards the end of the year, it's not that huge abundant amount, but hey, uh, you st it started working like in the next part of the year. The, the <laughs> I can't say the next quarter, but from um, uh, September to December, it uh, during that time you start getting the results, which indicates that the next year, uh, due to that specific investment that you've done in the second part of your year, because what you have in mind now has or is already manifesting in the first part of your year. There's something else here in the second part of your year. I'm just answering a question that, that I can hear. Oh no, it's just going to happen now. This is a new thing, as you can see. This is a new idea that you have here. So a new idea that you have in the uh, 
towards the end of the ha first half of the year starts getting you results in the second half. And this means, this means with this stability, the Knight of Pentacles is a card of stability. It shows you that this means that the year after is going to start bringing you a lot of abundance. So it's going to go up from there. Oh, so nice. And you're, you're getting so much experience. That's why you've got the magician card, the, 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 the skilled person. You're, you're, and the tales you're collecting this year, a lot of knowledge, a lot of wisdom, a lot of power in knowing how things work. Uh, you are uh, creating connections, you see? You're creating connections, you're creating collaborations, partnerships. Uh, you are building as a team together. You are the leader of this because you were able to foresee something that others weren't there by you because they love your idea. And everyone's working passionately here. I love this for you. This is a team that truly has one united vision that they love and everyone's working to make it happen. Like I said, you're really going to be commemorated with great respect for this. You're going to be celebrating this towards the end of the year going, yes, I did it. <laughs> I'm the magician. You ended, you end this pain fully uh, by the end of the year and things start becoming stable and consistent. And my dear pile number two, this is exactly what I see in your reading. I wish you the best of luck in your next year. This was your career uh, reading. If you've enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a reading that I upload. And my dear pile number two, I'll catch you in the next reading. Bye! Hi, pile number three. Welcome to your reading. Today, as you know, we're taking a look at your full year. Uh, next year in terms of your career in detail. To do this reading, I will be dividing your reading into three sections. The first part, which will be the first row, will be zooming in and taking a look at what's going to happen exactly between January to April, from January to April. Then the second row will be from May to August. And then, of course, the third row will be from September to December. Can't wait to get into your reading and get all the details. The last two piles were full of details. And so I can't wait to see what this pile will bring. But very quickly, let me introduce your pile to you. Your crystal is the beautiful Lodalite. Your significator card is the Chariot. And if you've picked your pile using your zodiac signs, then in that case, the signs for this pile are Virgo, Sagittarius, Pisces, and Aquarius. Welcome to your reading, guys. If these are not your signs, please don't worry about it. It's just another way for others to pick their piles as well. Okay, so let's begin straight away. Place your beautiful crystal right there. Create space. Okay. And let's explore your reading and see what your or oracle cards are first. Can you see your cards? My apologies. There we go. And starting off your reading, <clears throat> you've got the Thurisas rune. Okay. You've got moon in Pisces with empathy. Hmm. And you've got Sacral Chakra with Guilt. Mm. Interesting. Let's take a look at your tarot cards. So, you've got the Queen of Pentacles. Right, okay. You've got Knight of Swords. Lovely, okay. You've got, nice, the Knight of Wands. Okay, so I see what's going on here. And you've got the Seven of Swords. As well as the Six of Swords. Wonderful. Okay. <clears throat> so... Look, I've, 
I'm seeing the energy of something starting off at the beginning of the year that may feel like a shake-up with the Thurisa's, Thurisa's rune. Um, you might feel, you know, the Thurisa's rune, they represent the thorns. That's why you can see even they're shaped like the thorns. And so it looks like something has a little scratch where you go, ah, uh, at the beginning of the year. Not serious, you know, at the end of the day, it's a thorn. Nothing, nothing destructive, right? Um, it may feel in the moment like, oh my God, what is that? But really, the, the Thurisan's rune is like something uh, hurting, but only to teach you, just like the skin, where it scratches, then there's collagen, and then it builds up and it becomes healthy. It might even like ignite the collagen to build healthier skin around uh, the area. So it's that energy, where in the beginning of the year, you might feel in terms of your career that there is something that not huge but something that you may perceive as a shake-up and it, temporarily there is this feeling of with the sacral chakra here it might feel like how can i explain this oh i shouldn't have done that maybe i should have been careful with this and maybe you've got like some things that you're responsible about and you feel like i shouldn't have uh, done this i'm responsible for this and that and overall uh, there's a little bit of sadness there again i want to confirm that this is not so serious but you have learned with the seven this specific seven of swords that there may be an energy that you didn't fully um, understand. There's an idea maybe that you didn't fully understand. And what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And that's exactly what's going on here. I, I, have, I have good news. Um, I have good news for you. Here it shows you that despite the fact that, you know, you may be feeling a little bit sad because of the situation. It's like, oh, I wish that this didn't happen. Um, maybe you feel a little bit guilty about something you do um, before I get to the good news even in this area you've got you've got maybe like colleagues that absolutely sympathize with you you've got a manager for example that hears you out and uh, to gives you totally listens to you totally understands what happened there uh, maybe this is a market maybe it's like um, your clients totally understanding that it was out of your hands, right? Um, maybe like it's something in the in the market, like um, like a service provider that didn't fulfill in exactly the right time, and you're like, I'm so sorry, uh, they were supposed to give me this, and that's the agreement. You in any case, you definitely have. Um, whoever uh, like people listening to you this uh, the con concerned parties listening to you sympathizing with you understand how loyal you are to your job you've got the wolf here and you've got a dog all representing loyalty they understand how loyal you are they are loyal to you <clears throat> and the good news is you despite what's going on here First of all, this comes in dual energy. I'll talk about it in a moment. But you will fully have the resources, full resources and much, 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 much more to handle the situation. You will have the power, the ideas, the intellect, the information, everything. You're equipped with everything that you need to not only deal with the situation, but with the Seven of Swords to fully escape it. And escape it you will you can see with the six of swords here you're, it's a smooth ride you're gliding out faster than what is expected although the six of swords is an energy of slowly moving to calmer waters here we see the figure gliding Whew. so and um, what would usually take uh, a while to come out of here you're coming out of it very quickly because it seems like you're lucky to, first of all, be uh, heard well, 
you're lucky to have people supporting you, listening to you. You've got the resources, you've got the tools, uh, you've got the power, you've got the passion with the Knight of Wands, the motivation. You're like, that's not going to stop me. You've got the mindset, you've got the information, you're, you're doing well. And um, even if you think that this is going to take a while to come out of, no, uh, you're moving relatively quickly out of this in the first part of your year. And that's perhaps why you've got the vehicle. You you are that character. Um, here in your vehicle, you've got the uh, demigod in Hinduism called Garuda, who is the um, vehicle. Uh, what is it called? Uh, Vahana. The Vahana is the vehicle to carry the god Vishnu, right? The uh, Garuda can swiftly travel anywhere. You can see that swiftness <clears throat> in that energy. So first of all, you're swiftly taking yourself out of that energy, escaping it for sure. Uh, and you've also learned, you've realized the, the, the situation, how it's a double-edged sword. And now you're using it to your favor and not against. You're like, oh, okay, so that's how it works. Cool. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to use that same thing to protect myself. So it's just, it seems like it's something you weren't really aware of. You didn't know it was pretty new to you. Um, and that's why you felt a little, you feel, I kept saying felt, <laughs> you will feel a little bit like responsible for it. But really you have other people going you're this is you're not responsible we understand um but you're really doing your due diligence you're doing your responsibility nonetheless and uh, that sacral chakra although for a while uh, is like oh i feel really bad you're pulling yourself out of it with strength uh, and uh, you're showing power taking yourself out of it relatively quickly swiftly uh, in the first part of your year now, that also shows us that this will show authority, capability, and uh, it is also resulting in you making a lot of money. We're not going to forget about the energy of the Queen of Pentacles here. This will, although this has like this dual meaning from the first part of your reading to the connecting to the second part of the reading here that explains it, it shows that dual energy. Uh, you have the resources to make it work. But it also shows that uh, you are getting a lot of money, um, whether due to this situation or in general. You're making also a lot of money. You're living a comfortable life with the Queen of Pentacles. So I think they're not r that connected. Um, like that situation perhaps is not going to hit in your finances. You're doing well. And also, I see you in the first part of the year thriving financially. Your, your money is carrying you well. Maybe that's your salary or the money that you're making or the money that you made. Uh, I, I see you living comfortably. That's the queen of pentacles. Living comfortably, living a nice life that you love. So the area of finances, thankfully, is 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 great it's just that you didn't want uh, this to happen you feel responsible for it uh but yeah just like i keep telling you although you feel responsible others can truly uh, understand and yeah that what doesn't hurt you makes you what doesn't sorry kill you makes you stronger you're definitely more empowered by this and you're moving out of it swiftly so uh, my dear pile number one, that is the energy starting off uh, the reading that I see uh, happening in your year. I don't see you like um, losing really anything. It's kind of like with the thorn here, the sword, a little bit of hurt. How about we get an idea? Look, I, I have something to tell you. The best thing about tarot is that it does not tell you the future. It shows you the energy that could happen based on the energy of today. One of the great things about tarot is that you get to learn what could happen, equip yourself, and you can change that path. So knowing that, if you don't want to go through this, we can pull out some cards and see why did this disruption happen? What do you need to be careful about? We'll pull out some guidance. What do you need to be careful about? So if you choose to not go through this in the first place, 
learn the lesson now, I guess, um, then you won't have to. So what is your guidance with regards to this if you choose or wish to not go through it? You've got the Queen of Cups. Ah, you've got the Nine of Swords. And you've got the Ace of Swords, Sever Ties. When you can see that something feels wrong, it's you, your mind is alerting you to something that is wrong. The sounds are um, loud and clear. For example, maybe if we take the example of that supplier, their actions continue to be unreliable. And you, for, for example, forgive them, understand, you're like, okay, but, but uh, we've signed this contract and a long time has already gone. Maybe I should just stick to it. No, your reading is saying when the message, when, the, um, when you can hear in your mind loud and clear that something is not right, decide to cut the ties and make a bold move, say, no, I'm not going to continue to deal with something that just isn't right. This, my mind's been telling me, this mind and intuition here, it seems, this is not right, this is not right. Another thing is, don't be forced to, to do something by someone who's scaring you, for example. Uh, stay emotionally balanced is your biggest guidance, by the way, with, with regards to this situation. Because if you are not in your element, you will find yourself moving towards or doing things out of fear. And so to look at this, like you know, maybe be prone to someone manipulating you or scaring you, pushing you to do something that you don't really, that you know, do you see how this figure is just holding her hands to her ears and mind? She knows, sorry, this just doesn't sound right. So to avoid all of that, that can absolutely happen. In fact, your guidance is you don't need to go through this. Whatever this is or going to be, stay emotionally balanced. Don't let your fears uh, wave um, sway you left and right. Stay stable. Don't be afraid. Uh, and trust that the best is going to happen for you. And when you see, you know that something's just not right, it's not sounding right, sever the ties, cut the ties, cancel, don't do it. So that is your exact guidance to this situation. You don't have to go through this and you will change the fate of your, the first part of the year. In case you do that, your first of uh, part of the year is going to look like this. King of Cups. <laughs> sun card it's supposed to be awesome because i do see you living comfortably here you're doing well page of cups you're able to focus on your creative endeavors and you've got two more cards the two of swords and the ace of cups you can see here you would have defied what was meant to happen and instead enjoy your uh, enjoy your year you would have you would properly ward off let's call it ward off what was meant to happen and instead feel blessed because if you ward off that energy otherwise everything is really positive um you're able to focus on your creative <coughs> creativity your creative endeavors on your creative pursuits uh, i see you being emotionally satisfied with the year, you're already doing financially well. And instead of focusing on your creative endeavors in the second quarter, you can start doing that right off the bat from the very beginning. Uh, it is, you can see with the Ace of Cups, the King of Cups, this is a, a, not a quarter, a four months that you are supposed to enjoy. Uh, it is supposed to be fun with the Sun card. Uh, and the page of cups you're supposed to enjoy that time you're supposed to do work that you love 
it, it's supposed to be great. Finances are on point anyways in either case. So yeah, it's not a, 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 a time where you're meant to really suffer. Although the positive part here is that you will get to learn a lot. But hey, if you do sever ties, perhaps you can always go back and um, research, ask questions um, on how to make yourself safe the next time a situation like this would encounter you, right? So you can, since it's happening anyways, you're just not choosing to go with it. You can always research and enlighten yourself. But yeah, this doesn't have to be the scenario. You can absolutely enjoy that first part of the year, especially because it seems to me like you're focused on your creative endeavors. Yeah, you've got the sacral chakra. That's why your creative endeavors instead. Okay, so let me shuffle your deck. You've got a card here. Ooh, six of cups. It's a time of enjoyment, creativity, um, bringing your inner child out. I love the energy <laughs> of this pile. Okay, so let me, oops, what did I do here? Yeah, uh, let me shuffle your cards and I will be back. All right, let's see what happens in the second quarter. My dear pile number three. Ah, let's pull out the Oracle cards first. And Oracle card here. Oh, I actually feel this one and this one. And there. Okay. So checking your Oracle cards first. You've got, ooh, love this for you. The heart chakra with wisdom. Lovely. You've got Mercury and Capricorn with organization. You've got a grip on your career, on your work, or on your organization. You've got Venus in Leo with affair. Now, I believe the cards are following us in terms of what we read in both cases, right? So, uh, if I can just move the cards a little bit, we can have more space to the right, yeah? This way you can both see the cards and we can still have space. Okay, oh, so you've got the Nothi's rune right next to the affair. Okay, let's pull out your tarot cards. So you've got the Page of Swords. You've got the High Priestess. The Lover's Card. I feel like you're going to love your new reality. You really are. Okay. You've got the Four of Wands. Lovely. Okay. And you've got the King of Pentacles. It's all looking good. I, however, want to understand, it seems like there is a specific restriction. It's not affecting your life overall. Something that you find out about in the second part of your year. But other than that, which we will explore on, other than that, you've got a grip on your organization, on your business, on your career, you're thriving, you're doing well, you've got the goddess Demeter here, the goddess of harvest and abundance, <laughs> you've got the king of pentacles, there's abundance, so I see you feeling like you're in a powerful position, you're ruling uh, well, you're, you feel like you've got a grip, you're getting rewards, right? You feel like you can't believe that you are living in a beautiful world. You feel like you're making the right choices for yourself when it comes to your career. The Four of Wands shows that you are leveling up and also it looks as well that you're enjoying your life again. That keeps showing up. Um, again, the heart chakra with wisdom, you're learning, but at the same time, you love your life. You're, you love what you're doing. I feel like pile number two, uh, you're very lucky in that uh, you seem to, you come across that you're doing something creative and you come across as genuinely enjoying your work. 
you love what you do or at least you're going to be loving what you do uh, you love where you are you you're the person who loves their organization or maybe this is your business you love your business you love the money you're making out of it so it's all good uh, uh, i don't want to say except cuz cuz that may not be the right way to say it, but we do see something, a situation here. It looks like there is something that keeps popping up for you um, with affair. You know, an affair is done behind someone's back. So I feel like you discover something that you weren't seeing before, but it's good. It's like good, good news, but bad news. Bad news in that you're like, oh no, look at that restriction. Good news, you're like, God, uh, thank God I caught this because uh, in general, the cards are very positive. I don't see it affecting you. In fact, it's opening up. It's allowing you to open up, um, open yourself out of your situation and even <laughs> go up higher. It's that restriction that grows your muscle that allows you to fully come out of something altogether, not just the restriction itself. And no wonder, again, you've got uh, Garuda. That's the power here. The, the, the Garuda is the protector, known as the protector, someone who has the power to swiftly, as, as explained, travel from one place to another, travel anywhere. Uh, so you can see that you've got that capability, or at least that's the energy uh, throughout the year, you're protected. Uh, that's number one. Number two, you will have the ability to always swiftly take yourself out of a situation that you don't like and go very quickly towards something that you love, which is what we're seeing <laughs> in the second part of your year already. And again, and again, you can see that you find out about something. Perhaps, are you stepping into new territory maybe? Uh, somehow, anyways... You can see here that you're, or not necessarily, you're discovering something that you didn't know about, but luckily you discover early with the Page of Swords. You're like, what is that? See, it's like a slithering new moon. And you're like, ah, what's that? You discover early s some form of restriction that perhaps could cause trouble later. You're like, ah, that's not right. And you learn about it with the Page of Swords. You you get to know the depth of it. The High Priestess is the uh, a secret knowledge, right? So you you start being aware of it. You dig deep. You get in deep, and you get everything out of it. You're like, ah, so that's the situation. That's how things work. Uh, that's how I can avoid it. Maybe I can like remove this whole thing altogether. You're getting into the depth of the depth of the depth of things down to the secret information that most people don't know, don't get to due to your great research skills with the Page of Swords. And with that, you remove this um, or know how to deal with this restriction beautifully. Everything is other is uh, otherwise moving smoothly. You have control. You're like, okay, if that's the restriction, I get it. I know how to work with it. I can remove it or I can like learn how to deal with it in a smart way, maneuver around it. It's not going to affect you because right off the bat, you're aware of it and you dig deep. You find everything pertaining to the situation. And with that opening here, this is going to be great news, as I told you, because it's kind of like as you learn that muscle that you will gain to not just deal with this restriction. It's almost like a gift from the universe. It allows you to go other places that you haven't been to grow, um, evolve, have your business or your position in your company evolve and grow. So, yeah, you're figuring things out. You're abundant. You're very happy otherwise. I think you could even here be, <laughs> funny enough, even enjoying learning about it. The more you learn, the more you feel like, oh, okay, I know how to handle this situation. Uh, I know how to handle... I got a grip. You, th this is the theme here. You've got a grip on everything uh, in the second quarter. And you're really loving and enjoying life. You're, you're doing good, uh, my dear pile number two. <laughs>
Mm. That's why you've got the lover's card here. The choices that you are going to be making are going to level you up into an even better world that you will really love. I think here you're looking at yourself and you're asking, oh my God, I, I did this. I created this. I, I was able to achieve this. Thank you, me. Thank you. <laughs> so that's what's going on here. You're admiring your choices, your decisions, the things that you have learned. Love your energy, uh, my dear pile number three. Okay, so that's what we're seeing from May to August. That's what's going on. Money in your situation is going strong, even from the very beginning. It's continuing to be great. Abundance is all over your reading. Uh, I would say uh, here and there, there's a bunch of what I would call inconveniences. Um, sometimes it would feel a little bit bad because you feel responsible but really they're not a huge thing okay and like i told you the guidance here as we saw in your cards you can really avoid this altogether. here this is something you're meant to find out about in the new moon with the, with the idea of the new moon you're meant to find out about it you're meant to learn how to deal with it all right let's now take a look at the third part of your year which is from september to december Let's see what you've got. This one's moving. I'm actually going to take it. There we go. Oh, we've got three cards here. All right. And good thing we've got space in the third part of the reading. <laughs> and let's pull out a rune. So you've got the throat chakra with isolation. Are you thinking of going to an event with isolation? Maybe you don't usually socialize. Is this a networking event? Going to a party like uh, inauguration? I don't know. Uh, putting yourself out there could be another thing. <laughs> okay. So you've got the throat chakra. You've got <clears throat> the moon in Capricorn with practicality. You've got Mars in Aquarius with rebellion. Mm, you're doing something out of your comfort zone. When it comes to your work because you understand how important it is to keep what you're doing running and so you're like oh, i'm just gonna have to do this put myself out there somehow or do something maybe it's a creative endeavor it doesn't have to be put yourself out there maybe like it's a you're already doing something creative obviously but here it's like maybe it's out of your comfort zone with isolation you're comfortable doing like if you're a writer writing in a specific area if you are an artist whatever you're using your mind and uh, part of yourself to do i think there is an expansion here or this is going out of your comfort zone as in going to a networking event maybe and you don't like going to networking events that's throat chakra uh, like communication, something like that. But you understand here, you've, uh, uh, you're obviously growing, right? You're doing so well and you understand that you must do this in order to continue to do, uh, to, to continue that growth, to be practical, to do the right thing for yourself. So here you've got Mars in Leo with egotism, <laughs> okay? Uh, perhaps this is showing how you're going to do so well that you're proud of yourself. You're like, oh, I did it. <laughs> uh, I'm s I I and maybe discovering a part of yourself that you didn't know about, like really feeling it here, like um, going, oh, my God, I went out of my comfort zone and I got a lot of praise for it. I got a lot of appreciation for it. It, it just Maybe I am that. <laughs> so that there's that energy here. 
and you've got the Burkana rune, a new beginning happens due to this going out of your comfort zone. They always say that a lot of the things you wish for, the many things you wish for are out of your comfort zone and you deserve to be so proud of you, yourself in that moment because it looks like it's out. It may feel like an out of body experience even <laughs> with the suit here, but you're like, I'm going to conquer this. I'm not going to let my mind stand in my way. And a new beginning happens or occurs with the Burkana rune. The Burkana rune is a rune of like fertility, but it's also healing. So it's also like a new beginning as mentioned. So it's a new beginning, first of all, of you healing that mis limiting belief about yourself or about your capabilities. And it's healing. So you heal that part of you forever. Uh, and you also begin something new for yourself with that, the possibilities. And you're all about possibilities here. <laughs> so you, there's something about you thinking, ah, what are the possibilities? You're definitely someone who loves to explore and learn. And you're already thinking, ah, what's the possibility? So let's explore together. What are the possibilities that you will be thinking about? And perhaps even implementing in the third part of your year. Bold move, big results. Wow. <laughs> so first of all, you've got the 10 of cups. Hold up. This is a card of a family. This is a card of a community community perhaps for some of you you might be putting yourself out there like as in for example social media and creating a community it works out great for you uh, um, but not of course not necessarily maybe oh the the networking event maybe you go out to a networking event and you meet uh, the right people who will who you will love and all of you are like helping each other out here like a family. So this is great. You're, you're connecting with others with this bold move. Maybe you're going out of your comfort zone to do something creative and you've got a huge amount of people who love your work. So that's the new beginning there. And that's why you're like, there's the ego here. You're like, there's a lot of clapping. <laughs> there's a lot of, we love you. This is awesome. We love your expression with the throat ch chakra. Okay, so you've got the six of pentacles. Everybody's talking about you, it seems. Uh, also, the six of pentacles is generosity. So there there could be generosity in, in people speaking about you. Um, what is it called? They are recommending you to other people which brings more business for you it could be this could be like people paying you generously for what you're doing even tipping all of that you can see in the six of pentacles so uh, a lot of money coming from that community or giving you information about what to do and that information is worth a lot which is highly probable with the high priestess here so yeah, it's all different energies depending on how this is going to manifest for you. But that's definitely what's going on at the end of the day. Uh, the examples will differ and how it manifests will differ from each person listening to another. And you've, ooh, you've got the seven of pentacles. Do you see? It's like this community is allowing you now, not only do they lead you to the right way, recommend you, help you, uh, they're generous with you, but also they allow you, the Burkana rune is a rune of fertility as well. So they allow you and help you and love you and nurture you and encourage you to begin something. This thing obviously is going to take time, with the seven of pentacles, but they're like, please do this. You can do this. We're, we're with you. Please begin this. And there's so much love um, and encouragement and support as you create this new beginning with the seven of pentacles. 
you've got the emperor oh something starts super small and becomes very solid is this all in the third part of the year wow i love this for you and you've got the five of pentacles what you one day thought wouldn't bring you money specifically wouldn't work out for you <laughs> is in the third quarter going to be solid and giving you so much you think you can't have money from this direction but you will be uh, it's it's out of your like it's like there's such lack mentality here. it's like no 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 this can never happen for me the head's on the head no 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 there's this you're holding on to your beliefs for so long thinking oh no that i can never be this person or i can never do this type of art or i can never write this book or i can never do this bold move or i can never network i, I can never put myself out there you've held on to this limiting idea for so long that was limiting you financially as well and uh, you can see with all the love and encouragement you're like okay let's grow this and let's see what happens you're growing this and your community is with you and suddenly it becomes solid it forms with the four with the emperor uh, what was an idea or efforts that you put into something you will be shocked that it comes into form at, at towards the end of the year and not just that it starts giving you money <laughs> what a new beginning and what a surprise you totally deserve to be proud of yourself totally i mean who who's who should be proud of the, themselves then <laughs> my dear pile number three you totally rocked this uh, future you and again as always, just like your significator card, the the chariot, uh, you can see like Garuda, you always move swiftly into new territories, just like the third part of your year, second part, first part, that's your energy throughout the year. Uh, you always move swiftly, whether this is a restriction or something that uh, mi uh, a mishap that happened or that you're going to altogether avoid or realizing that you have to do something that you're not comfortable with outside of your comfort zone and doing it anyway. All throughout, you are in different ways. It's like the universe is giving you these energies and watching you thrive and move past them only to grow. <laughs> and my dear pile number three, this is exactly what I see for you in terms of your career in detail, all of the energies and how it's going to roll out. Um, I love how you're abundant and creating even more abundance. Uh, I love the creativity and the process that you're going to be going through in your year. Such a fantastic reading. I wish you the best of luck. Uh, and if you've enjoyed your reading, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a reading that I upload. And my dear pile number three, I'll catch you in the next reading. Bye.